scroll saw is a very versatile tool. In fact, it's my favorite tool in the shop. I use it just about every day and for pretty much every project that I work on. But the first thing you have to do after you decide on a pattern is to find a way to attach the pattern to the wood. With a table saw, you set your rip fence and you rip it to width, or you use your your cross cut, uh, your miter's gauge, and you cross cut it to length. But with the scroll saw, there's very few straight lines. In fact, the scroll saw is not very good at making straight cuts. It excels at making curves. And what I have here is a set of plans. It's from toymakingplans.com, Max Friendly Truck Stop. And I'm going to be making that set today and I'm going to use it to show you the nine different ways that I have discovered of transferring a scroll saw pattern to wood. Let's start. The first method is to use a spray adhesive just by itself. There's lots of brands out there. You should be able to find this in local art supply stores or they sell school supplies. Uh, hardware store, plenty of places will carry some brand or another of this. And some of them are permanent only, some of them are temporary. This particular one is temporary or permanent. Read the instructions, yeah. Read the instructions to find out which, how to uh, use it for uh, a temporary use because uh, you don't want the pattern to stay. You want to be able to peel it off when you're done. Now, I use a box cardboard box, cut down box to contain the overspray. This room is ventilated, but even so, I'm going to wear a mask and light spray. Now the instructions for this say to leave it, let it sit uh, for three to five minutes before joining for a temporary bond. So we're going to wait a few minutes and we're going to attach it. All right, it's been a couple minutes. There's a piece of wood, our pattern. You definitely want to make this a little bit oversized. It makes it a whole lot easier to fit. That's it. That pattern is applied and it's ready for cutting. Second method, and this is very common, uh, as far as I can tell, it's probably the most common method, is to use blue painter's tape. Put the painter's tape on the wood. And then you use the spray adhesive, which we've already looked at, to attach the pattern to the painter's tape. So let me go spray these, and I'll come back in just a second. The advantage to this, there's two advantages, at least a couple advantages. One is that it doesn't matter what kind of spray adhesive you use, or other adhesive you use for that matter, to attach the patterns, because they're being attached to the tape and not to the wood itself. When you're done, you just peel off, peel off the tape. The second advantage, and the reason why so many people use it, is that the tape acts as a lubricant when you're cutting, and it helps keep the blade a little bit cooler and makes it last longer. The third method, which is pretty much the same as the second, is to use clear packing tape. You put that on the wood and attach the patterns to the packing tape. Works the same as the blue painter's tape, and it also provides lubrication. One place I have found the packing tape to be particularly useful is for stack cutting. These are some Christmas ornaments, and I stacked them. These are about 
quarter inch. I stacked them three deep and there's quite a few cuts there. I don't want to cut these one at a time. I'd rather, I'd stack cutting makes a whole lot more sense. So the packing tape over this does two things. It, key, it provides lubrication to the blade and it also keeps the pattern where you want it and it keeps the wood from shifting in the second and the third or however many layers you have. Number four is one I haven't seen until recently. And that's double-sided masking tape. Now, make sure you don't get double-sided carpet tape because that is extremely strong and you're likely to cause damage to the pattern, to the wood, when you remove the pattern. So, make sure it's easily removable. I found this online and I found it works fine. It's going to take three strips for this because it's a wide pattern. I have to do is pry up an end there you go this is a clear tape the one I bought masking tape obviously is generally not clear uh, but the important thing is a double-sided tape that's not too strong. Strong enough to hold the pattern in place, but not too strong that you can't get it loose when you want it to. The fifth I'm not going to demonstrate. I don't happen to have on hand. I've not done it, but I don't see why it wouldn't work well. And that's to use full sheet adhesive labels like you would buy for a uh, package, to put on a package. They come in 8x10 sheets. You could run that 8x10 sheet easily through your printer or through a copier, depending on how you're making your patterns for your, your copies for the patterns. I did try it with a half sheet uh, just recently and it worked fine. The main thing is you want to tr try it on a, some scrap first to make sure that the adhesive peels off the wood. It's meant to stay permanently on an envelope, but on wood it, I found it came off without too much trouble. Number six is clear shelf paper liner. I've seen a number of people use this. You can buy this online. It should be available any place that sells house housewares, a uh, you know a department, a uh, big box store, and uh, it's it's clear. Comes in rolls like this, and it's a matter of you peel off the the label or peel off the label. You peel off the backing, put it on your wood, and then cut it to, to uh, shape, and then you use the uh, your, your adhesive to glue the pattern to the shelf liner. I've used it. It works fine. Number seven is glue sticks. These are easy to find anywhere they sell children's art supplies. So anywhere they have school supplies, they'll have these. You just roll it on the back of the pattern 
and stick the pattern onto the wood. And I found I found that they the pattern comes out fairly easily. So this works particularly well when you've got small scraps like this. I've resolved not to call them scraps. I've resolved to call them small pieces. They're not, they become scraps when it's down to the point I can't use them for anything anymore. But when you have small pieces like this, you can't bear to throw away. Don't throw them away if you're like me and you make toys, other small items. Just use them for things like this. The glue sticks comes in, come in very handy for this. And as I said, the pattern comes off pretty easily when you're done. Number eight is my personal favorite. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, my project videos, you've seen me use this. This is called scroll saw tape. I'll leave the link in the description because as far as I know, there's only it's only available from one place. And uh, it comes out of Canada, but in the US it comes out of scroll online. Winfield, winfieldcollection.com and all you do is you unroll it cut it to width peel off the backing and attach your patterns. I've been using this for some time, at least at least a couple years, and it's just plain become my go-to. It's not cheap. It may be, if you look at all the methods, it may be the most expensive, although by the time you had the cost of the tape and the spray adhesive, it's not cheap either, but I like it because it's convenient that you saw how fast it help you can apply. When you're done, it holds the patterns in place. When you're cutting, if you make a mistake and have to pull this pattern off and move it a little bit, just get the edge of a knife under there. You can pull it off and attach it again, and it's still going to stay. And when you're done cutting out these patterns, it's very easy to, to peel the patterns off. There's no residue, and it's just plain a joy to work with. That's my personal favorite. The ninth method is one I use frequently. I've already sprayed this. And it's still, it's still wet, still tacky, because for this one I want a permanent bond. And what I've done is I've attached the pattern to some masonite. And now I will cut the pattern and use that for making multiples of an item. This pattern is very simple, so it's easy to trace with a pencil. And this particular pattern calls for eight of these. So rather than have to paste eight patterns onto, onto the wood, I will just do it once on the masonite and then tra transfer it to the final stock. It, I use this frequently for patterns that are going to be used over and over. It's only good for simple patterns if there's any interior cuts. It's generally kind of difficult to do. But for simple shapes like this, it's a very good method. And if, especially if you plan on making, you need to make a bunch of one particular item for a set or if you plan on making an item over and over again.